So, hello everyone. So I'd like to welcome everyone to the regular August meeting of the Hoboken Board of Education. Um, Mr. Kukfell is absent today, so I'll be stepping in. Um, and so I'd like to call the meeting to order. Mr. Moffitt, will you please read the statement of compliance? This meeting is being held in conformity of the Open Public Meeting Act. Proper public notice of this meeting has been published in the local papers on August 13, 2016 and August 14, 2016. If any board member or member of the public in attendance believes that this meeting is in violation of the Open Public Meeting Act, the Hoboken Board of Education requests that they make a statement at this time. The board wishes to make those in attendance aware that this meeting is being recorded on video and will be broadcast by the board at a later date on cable television channel 77 and Fios channel 46. The full meeting recording will also be made available on board docs, which can be accessed through the district homepage. The Hoboken Board of Education is committed to preserving the decorum of the public process and is mindful that we live in the electronic age of computers, cell phones, and other electronic communication devices. Nevertheless, we respectfully request that all meeting participants kindly silence their electronic devices during the course of the meeting, and if use of the device is necessary, we ask that you please leave the meeting room if you need to conduct personal business. Thank you. Please rise for the salute to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Okay. All right. Mr. Moffat, will you please call the roll? Ms. Angley? Here. Mr. Biancamana? Present. Ms. Evans? Here. Dr. Gold? Here. Ms. Montgomery? Here. Ms. Stromwall? Here. Okay, so um, we obviously don't have students of the month. We'll look forward to that next month. And um, Dr. Johnson is going to do her report after uh, we do the consent agenda. So I'll just move right along to um, the business administrator's report. Sure, I just have uh, one update. Uh, on tonight's agenda, 10.08 has been updated, and that's the awarding of student transportation contracts. Uh, we had uh, bid openings on August 12th at, uh, at both 10.30 and 11 o'clock for both home to school routes and other school related activities. The subject action was updated to reflect the winning bids for all the district routes for the upcoming uh, school year and we recommend awarding those contracts. So if you uh, look, we left it on your, your chair or on you know, the front of your chair there. Uh, it's all the updates you received an agenda uh, possibly blank as far as knowing that we had an opening on the 12th, so that's all been updated for you, and it's uh, the three respective pages. That okay. My Thanks. All right. So we'll move along to committee reports. Dr. Gold for curriculum, co-curriculum okay. and athletics. Curriculum and athletics. We're working in partnership with Stevens and another STEM grant. They're like our best friends now. We're exploring the possibility of having international travel for our students. But we've got to figure out ways to accommodate students who have limited financial resources and that can be accounted for by a number of savings programs or activities to raise money. The school is implementing a number of professional development programs covering such topics as increasing understanding, empathy, tolerance, that's nice. School community building through the arts. We're going to be looking at advanced subject matter training, uh, AP seminars, Project Lead the Way, curriculum development, so the idea is that you spend a little money for professional development and um, it'll pay off in great quantity. Okay, we're going to have academic clarity maps are being developed to allow parents to understand, to track subject matter expert, I'm sorry, to track subject matter. So if you want to know what your kids should be covering, you can go to the uh, website and you'll see really where they should be. It's really not a a straight jacket, but it's a way to give the parents a feel for where their child should be anywhere during the uh, semester. 
The high school have dual enrollment classes, meaning that qualified teachers in Hoboken High School will also be able to teach some college courses. This year, students will be provided with a structured personal growth period. I first thought it was just putting them in a room and letting them you know, throw spitballs and stuff, but that's not the case. Um, they'll be having SAT um, prep. They'll be having workshops. They'll be having tutoring. They'll be uh, having virtual courses. They'll be having individual seminars, music, drama, art, writing labs. So this period will be a wonderful time for students in a structured environment to be able to explore educational opportunities. There'll be a middle um, school orientation and a family dinner held September the 6th. Everybody talks about the middle school. When the parents come and go to this orientation, I think they'll feel really good about what's happening. A high school orientation was held for those participating in the college career and concentration program. For those of you who don't remember, three areas of expertise were identified where students can pursue their individual interests. These were the areas of biomedical research, computer and engineering sciences. Um, let's see. We will be honored at the New Jersey School Board Convention for our bronze certification in sustainability New Jersey program. I wanted to know what was such a big deal about this, but it lets us get money, which is nice. Um, there's a series of grants for people who actually um, achieved this honor, and it is an honor. Every school district's actually got it. And if you want to go to a website, which you won't remember, but I'll say it anyway, www.sustainablenewjerseyschools.com, you will see all the great um, things that come with working so hard to get the certification. And it's hard to believe, but the summer's almost over. So on September 1st and September 6th, teachers will be returning to start preparing for their new class. That's it. Okay, thank you. So the um, communications committee, I'll, I'll briefly mention that we did have a short meeting um, last Thursday. The governance and personnel committee meeting was very long, so the communications committee meeting was very short. Um, the main thing um, in terms of communication has been that parent letters have gone home from all the schools. So we'll, um, uh, that's really it for communications. Um, so we'll move along to facilities. Thank you. The facilities committee met on Wednesday, August 10th from 7.05 to 8.10 in Mr. Callagy's office. In attendance were Tom Klepfeld, Sharon Angley, Jennifer Evans, myself, Mr. Callagy, and Dr. Johnson. Items discussed. Facilities request. There will be no facility request on the agenda until the field is complete, except for the fire department using the field on September 11th for a charity softball game. The field's first use will be on September 9th when the high school football team has their opening game. A ribbon cutting is also planned for that day. All other facility requests will be put on the September agenda. Summer projects update. Although our students are on summer break, the facilities office is working around the clock for the opening of the new school year. Here are some updates from each of the schools. At the Hoboken Junior Senior High School, the field's infill was put in last Thursday. Unfortunately, there was an issue with the track due to the foundation of the bleachers that were removed over 30 years ago. But the concrete beneath the track has shifted, which required milling and paving prior to the installation of the new track. This issue has been uh, resolved and it will take another few days to actually complete it. Work is also being done in the auditorium. Sound panels are being upgraded due to the generosity of the Hoboken Education Foundation. Painting is underway, curtains are being changed, and broken seats are being repaired slash replaced. New house lighting will also be put in featuring LED lighting. The enhancements to the junior high wing are nearing completion as well, including new doors and enhanced security features. One item of note is that there's going, there will be three change orders on the September agenda equaling to 47,000, which is only 5% of the 10% we budgeted for overages. So kudos to the facilities office for that. Uh, in Wallace School, the gym is nearing completion, the bathrooms have been gutted, bleachers have been replaced, floor sanded for the first time ever, the ceiling has been upgraded, the new paint has been added, and all the electrical work has been done. Over in Brandt School, the floors of the corridors at Brandt have cork, which will now be tiles, and have a new skin to protect from moisture. And then, of course, routine work is also being done at Collaboro and Connors. 
The science and the robotics labs are being worked on and should be completed by the start of the school year. Overtime is approximately 50% of last year. The bulk of the capital improvements have been done by approved contractors, freeing up our custodians and maintenance staff to do significant projects. This has been the most productive summer in a long time facility-wise. And we will have a photo journal to show the before and after pictures of all the work when everything is complete. And again, kudos to this facilities office for that. Uh, another item we discussed was the lead testing follow-up. We were going to retest over the summer, but we are planning to do it in September because of the new federal guidelines that were released. The problem areas will remain out of use until the new testing is completed. Filtration systems will be added to those areas in need. Then just a couple of quick notes. We came to a consensus not to put netting around the field, as the cost would have been $60,000 and would have just covered one side. We will be purchasing a new portable backstop for a little under $4,000, which is bigger than the outdated and overutilized one we had previously. And then finally, tours of the schools will be available as soon as more work is being done. So that's all for this month. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Okay, finance? The finance committee met on my microphone working? The Finance Committee met on Wednesday, August 10th from 10 a.m. to 11.45. In attendance were Dr. Johnson, Mr. Moffitt, Mr. Klupfel, Mr. Gold, Ms. Soboloff, and myself. The committee reviewed all agenda items and recommends all for board approval. One of the contracts in 10.07 I wanted to provide some background on is for TGI office automation. This contract is for two interactive whiteboards which will be installed in the professional development room in Demarest. These will be 100% paid for through grant funding. The district is moving towards doing more in-house professional development as opposed to sending staff off-site. I also wanted to point out um, for item 10.15 that the district is required to disclose non-resident tuition rates regardless of whether there is space for non-resident students. The committee also discussed the food service program. Um, the year ended with profits of $46,000. Um, unfortunately, unpaid lunches were also approximately 46,000 as of June with 21 of that, 21,000 of that relating to the 2014-15 school year. This month, the auditors will review this balance to determine the amount of bad debt that will need to be written off. Great news um, on the lease purchase agreements. Um, both, lease, both leases came in at very low interest rates. The facilities lease um, will be financed through TD Bank at 2.2%, and the equipment lease um, will be also financed through TD Bank at 1.4%. Lastly, the committee discussed holding a separate meeting to review the financial reports and the budget book um, that are produced by Mr. Moffitt and the business office. That's it. Okay, thanks. So um, for governance and personnel committee, uh, the committee met on Thursday, August 11th from 5.30 to 8 o'clock. In attendance was myself, Ms. Montgomery, Ms. Soboloff, Mr. Klupfel, and Dr. Johnson. Um, as you'll see from looking at the agenda, there's a lot of governance and personnel items. Um, that's standard for this uh, August meeting um, as we prepare for the start of the school year. So as a result, the majority of the meeting was spent talking about staffing for the upcoming school year and reviewing the agenda items, uh, which we do recommend all of them for approval tonight. I did just want to uh, mention for items 9.12 and 9.20, uh, these are approval of volunteers for the theater and athletic departments. And so we have some nice long lists there. And so I did want to extend our thanks to the volunteers for their support of the district students and their endeav endeavors in these areas. Uh, we also briefly discussed um, where things stand with the preschool enrollment. And at the time of the meeting, things could have changed. Um, since then, all pre-K-4 students are placed at this time and there are about 38 pre-K-3 students uh, awaiting placement. So that um, concludes the Governance and Personnel uh, Committee report. Um, for, again, I'm, I'm sitting in for Mr. Klupfel, um, so I really don't have anything for, or too much for the President's report other than it's a really exciting time of year. Um, thanks to all the staff, there's a lot of work that gets done over the summer. So I think we're in really good shape and um, we're all looking forward to an exciting first day of school. So um, we'll just move on to public comment. Okay. Um, 
Very quickly, um, oh, sure. Ms. Evans, yeah. yep. I, I was just curious, since we changed the order of the meeting and Dr. Johnson's report is coming <laughs> after we vote on the consent agenda, yes. your report is not going to have anything to do with any item on the agenda then, correct? Um, yeah, actually, yes. So actually, what I didn't want... I uh, what I did not want to do so is um, address anything in my superintendent's report before the board took action. Before the board, I'm sorry. Took action. Oh, I see. So we'll let the board take action, and then um, after the board takes action, then um, I'll make a few comments about um, oh, okay. some staffing. Okay. okay. Do right. we have any speakers? Yes, I have one speaker signed for agenda items, and that is uh, Miss Patty Waiters. Okay. Um, Bill, do you have the timer, or can you? I can time it. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> Good evening, Patricia Waiters, 1233 Park Avenue. One page. Well, there's no page. Page 1329. I'm going by the bottom number. 1329. I don't know how you adjust. Let me read the um, government, government and per, governance and personnel 9.11 and 9.13. I'm looking at these amounts and these stipends and I'm confused. I'm seeing it repeat itself twice like the, um, like the high school band, David, whatever his last name is. Um, and a few other ones. Just the double ones, that's still only one, it's not two, right? Like when you see school band and it's 543, 5,000, then you see 2,000 for the same name. They get paid both of those. Yeah, if I could just enter. 15 and 16. Are, are you talking about item 19, what is it, 9.13 you're talking yes, about? Yes, 9.13. There's a few of them like that. Yeah, they get, they get paid. Is that a misprint? Oh, okay. No. No. Okay, so 17 and 18, that's what I really want to speak about. Damien Arnon. People used to be standing at this microphone saying negative things. This man is great. I have to say this. I get so many requests for me to put in type of, um, from parents, everybody. I mean, some of our kids that went on to college, everything. He deserved it. If I could do anything else, I want to place it on the record tonight. Just recognition from the whole city and the, um, all of the mothers, the children, everything about Mr. Arnon. Hardworking, very respectful, help us, even if he's not our kid's counselor. And that's what um, the Board of Education and Compassion is about. I really wanted to put that on the record because this man deserves every penny of what he get and, and more, if you can. But I really wanted to recognize him tonight on such a hard working school teacher, whatever he is, that he's been to me, my kids, and everybody else in the neighborhood. So I had to give that shout out for him. Facilities, Mr. Bianca Monica, you said tonight that they're not gonna rent out the facilities. Are you over all the facilities, like the gym, the church? Like, cause I have a, a problem with them renting that much money for the churches. Did you look into that? The young man that was here, the church closed down. I'll answer it when... Please, later, yeah, not yet. I'll I'm just naming it. a few, because a few other people came to me, and I'm looking at the amount that they've written out facilities lately in Hoboken. It's not fair to a lot of the kids. We being shut out. Wait a minute, let me finish. Sorry, sorry. We being shut out on a lot of things. So when you've written the facilities, facilities out, please keep the children in mind and stop making it about money. We lost the Boys and Girls Club. We lost a lot of facilities and play space. And all I'm seeing is Zog and all of these other entities coming in and written out our space. Please keep the kids in mind, because those could be locations for after school tutoring. I could give you a billion and one things to keep our kids off the streets and out of trouble where we could utilize that no, space. Right. It's only the field until the September meeting. Right. All the other facilities are going but to remain are, open. Do you oversee the other facilities is I, what I'm saying. Personally, no. Uh, the facilities office with the administration see, oversees it. Well, I'm just who? the chair of the, uh, Mr. Callagy. And uh, in uh, conjunction with Dr. Johnson. Well, overseas. I will take my concerns up with those two people. Okay. Thank you. Okay. There's okay. just that one speaker. That's one? Okay. Um, all right. So we'll move along to um, consent agenda. 
Does anyone want, do we make comments first then? Motion. motion? Okay, we'll do a motion. We need a motion for a consent agenda. Second. Okay. Motion is second by Ms. Angling. Okay. Did anyone have any comments or? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting my turn. Okay. Just two items uh, tonight. For the curriculum and instruction, the uh, approval of collaboration with Stevens Institute of Technology, I think it's great that we are collaborating with Stevens for our teachers to enhance their abilities in STEM. I think it's terrific. But I was just curious, Dr. Johnson, there is going to be a cost in terms of stipends. Is that covered by a grant? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And then for the contracts, 10.07, uh, you mentioned that there was a company uh, or the district was going to be receiving two whiteboards, I believe, uh, to enhance professional development in-house rather than sending teachers out. But there's another contract, which, is, which I believe is in its third year of three years, uh, the learning developments. And I was just curious, um, after this year, are we not going to renew this contract because we're doing more professional development in-house? And more so, do you feel, is it, has, has it been helpful in the last few years? Okay, so that particular contract that you're talking about that's on this agenda mm -hmm. is um, it, it was discussed in the Finance Committee a little more along the lines um, as Bill discussed for technology purposes and professional development but what that contract is really for is um, every child in the state of New Jersey is required to go through a series of technology assessments from the time they come into school, um, and there's there's different grade level benchmarks that they have to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and what most school districts in New Jersey use is this particular company because they benchmark and they store that particular data. Nice. Um, and and that data is used for um, the purpose of um, everything from your um, QSAC monitoring to ensuring that the kids are on track from a technological standpoint. Embedded in that contract is the professional development training that allows us to um, administer those tech benchmarks. It's not really a professional development contract. Oh, I see. It's, it, Correct. So, because I thought one was replacing the other, since no. we were getting these whiteboards in, and I said, "Well, we're just going to save on a contract." But since it's not, it's that really not equal. Basically. Yeah, that really doesn't have a whole lot to do with it. But what you will see on um, probably the next agenda are um, a series of, of contracts that we have approved in the past that we are consolidating and replacing with a smaller number mm -hmm. at a lower price. Right because this is the final year of this contract. So I was just curious, Correct. was it beneficial for the district in the last three years? I it's, mean, you can't really, I know it's really your first mm -hmm. year in a few months, but certainly, yeah. I definitely think that is an example of something that we could probably create in-house. Thank you. Um, and warehouse perfect. the data in-house. That's what I like to hear. Thank you. Okay. That's it. All right, anybody else? No? Okay. Call the vote. Ms. Angley? Yes. Mr. Biancamano? Uh, no on the minutes, 6.01 and 6.02, and yes on everything else. Ms. Evans? Yes. Dr. Gold? On 9.19, approval of athletic department personnel. No for number five, yes for everything else. Ms. Montgomery? Yes. And uh, Ms. Stromwall. Yes. Okay. Motion passes. So, okay. Dr. Johnson? Okay. All right. So, the uh, first thing that I would like to update the board on um, as we kind of come out of the summer and we're transitioning to the beginning of school is that um, all of our staff members have been hard at work, our facility staff members and our uh, maintenance staff, custodial staff um, have really been working hard this summer um, to ensure that all of our projects are um, going to be complete for the opening of school. Just a few um, important tips that are uh, tied to the facilities projects um, as well as curriculum. Um, we have a few new science labs that are coming in at the high school um, that are really exciting, a robotics um, engineering lab. Um, 
we uh, talked about it at the facilities committee, but the new floors in Brant look fantastic, so I can't wait till the doors open. Um, Wallace School is shaping up really nicely um, with some brightly uh, colored walls and, and new floor in the, the gym and uh, the cafeteria as well in terms of, of paint and new furniture. So there's a lot of things that are happening to change the environment of the uh, school system uh, holistically. We are also working on the back end of things that probably the public doesn't see uh, during the summer months and those are um, a lot of curriculum documents are being completed. Um, we've been holding meetings with um, staff members regarding training that they've gone to. Um, we're getting our Project Lead the Way program up and off the ground. Um, Another uh, important um, kind of item that has been brought to my attention um, on a number of occasions over the last maybe month and a half is the preschool program. So uh, Ms. Evans updated everybody on that preschool program. Our waiting list has reduced dramatically. However, the waiting list still does exist. Um, we, the last report that I received at the end of last week was that we were down under the 40 mark. And although it's probably a little bit difficult to believe, it's the lowest waiting list that we've had at this time. Um, in the last few years. However, at the same time, uh, we do recognize the fact that it creates some anxiety on the part of parents that are waiting for that spot. And as a result, we are exploring every possible uh, kind of option um, in terms of getting that list to be uh, reduced as quickly as possible by continuously examining um, every single name that's there, making sure that people who move let us know um, so that we can open those spots up. It is uh, something that we watch on, on a daily basis, that's for sure. And I've been spending a lot of times, time with different families and talking to them about uh, the process um, and hopefully beginning to demystify the process a, a little bit. Uh, passport to Learning program, just so everyone knows, we are coming into the final weeks of the summer and we're getting that all squared away. Um, we, I think we have uh, just over 500 students participating in the program and uh, there are a number of phenomenal enrichment courses for the kids as well as uh, academic support and challenge um, and a, a, a safe and supervised place for all kids that need aftercare um, in all of our schools, uh, elementary schools and, and in Brant Primary School as well. And uh, finally, uh, there are a lot of personnel uh, recommendations that I made for this agenda, so I wanted to thank the Board of Education and also the Personnel Committee for being so patient. Um, I think it's definitely beneficial to walk through each item, especially when there's this many people to ensure that the board understands um, all of the hiring. So all of the hiring that was done um, for this agenda are um, positions that fit within our budgeted footprint. We did make some changes um, and, and some movements around and consolidations in order to bring positions in that we think are extremely important. So what that means is we will now have a response to intervention RTI teachers, um, both math and reading. Uh, in the districts, which we have never had math. Um, so that's extremely important and we have increased the number of our reading RTI uh, teachers. Um, we have a new gifted and talented teacher that's on the agenda who is um, already excited and getting up and, and, and moving and getting ready to go. There are some transfers on the agenda and I think it's important for the um, board as well as the community to understand that when we make those transfers, um, we always make the transfers in the best interest of educational programs holistically. And I do take into account um, how kids feel about um, individuals that are being moved and how families feel about how um, the individuals who are being transferred, but we always have to keep in mind that we are one school district and we are not a district of schools, so we're here to service and serve all of our children holistically. And finally, uh, we have some change in structure um, at 
Hoboken High School, um, starting September 1st, we will be introducing two uh, new deans of um, students and programs. And the whole concept behind having the deans of students and programs is to enhance the climate and the culture um, of the high school to ensure that every single kid feels as um, comfortable and welcomed as they already do, but kind of enhancing that so it expands their experiences um, as well as their um, skill sets. Um, it will also give us the opportunity to allow our principal and our vice principal to spend more time with instructional work in the classroom. So we're really excited about it. And at this time, I, it would be great if um, Mr. Pacini and Mr. Dickerson, Mr. Pacini, if you want to come up first just to say um, you know, a sentence or two to the board regarding the new position. Hello, uh, my name is Derek Puccini. I, um, I've been a teacher in the district the last six years, uh, and I just want to take some time to thank you for creating the Dean of Students uh, position. Um, as soon as I saw the posting for it, I was happy about it, just because I knew that it was going to do great in the school. Uh, it was going to be better for the administration, the teachers, and most of all the students. Um, I do believe that the position will ensure you know, the behavior expectations for each of the kids, uh, for all the students, and um, it will be with the, with the position, uh, myself and Mr. Dickerson, um, we'll be able to deliver the best educational program we can for the students, and it'll be extremely um, beneficial. And I just want to thank you for the opportunity, um, and I'm eagerly awaiting uh, the school year to begin. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Dickerson, since you're going to be also taking on this new role. Good evening. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the board, thank the administration, thank the pick, and thank the families um, and all who are a part of this, hobo, this school system. When I heard about the opportunity, I was very really excited because it seemed as though um, a lot of things that are going on in education right now is very focused on the just the curriculum and just the student. And as educators, that is the, our number one priority. But with that, we also want to make sure that we're reaching the students and not just telling them what they need to teach, or what they need to learn, but also making sure that we give them the drive and the excitement about their learning. The dean and student's roles, as we've been speaking about them, is, is just that. So it's not just that person to look at it after there's been issues, but be there for, to help those students. But not just the students, the families, the teachers, and everyone in, involved. So we're really excited about the opportunity, about what this could be, and I'm just from everything I'm hearing from the district, um, where we're going. So I'm just really excited to be a part of it, and looking forward to meeting everyone, and just being an integral part of developing the, and helping to continue the development of the culture of Hoboken High School. Thank you very much. Thank you. And at this time, I am extremely excited to um, say that we have a uh, new principal at Connors Elementary School. Um, I'm certainly not sad because we're losing a principal because we're maintaining uh, that principal in a different role. Uh, but at this time, I'd like to welcome Dr. Tamika Pollins to uh, the podium. So much. I do want to take the time. Oh, sorry. Hello. I do want to take the time to thank the board and Dr. Johnson for allowing me to come into a leadership role here in Hoboken. To say that I'm excited about becoming principal at the Connor School is an understatement at this point. I literally have my clothes ready for tomorrow and my lunch is packed in the refrigerator ready to go. I'm excited about hitting the ground running. Um, I know that Mr. Fitzhugh, in collaboration with his staff, have done a lot of great work at Connor School already. So I do appreciate the fact that he's comfortable passing the torch to me and I want him to know 
and the board and the community to know that I feel very comfortable and ready and prepared to go in and continue the great work that's already been done. I'm definitely a person who believes that all kids can learn and all kids can show growth, so I'm really committed to working with teachers, parents, staff, and students to make sure that that growth happens and to be able to go out and build a rapport with the community as well. So starting tomorrow, I look forward to making every day at Connors a great day. Thank you so much, everybody, for this opportunity. Okay, and last um, but certainly not least, I am extremely honored to introduce our new Assistant Superintendent of Schools. Um, over the last couple months, uh, Mr. Fitzhugh and I have been doing a lot of work together on uh, curriculum projects and a lot of academic work, looking at uh, student achievement pieces and data. Um, and as a result of that, I knew after I interviewed a range of candidates that Mr. Fitzhugh uh, would definitely be the best fit for this position. He has um, certainly proven himself uh, to this Con Connor School community, but I think as a result of that to the entire city of Hoboken, he is a fearless uh, and passionate leader. He has a work ethic that is um, unmatched. Um, and he is continuously thinking. The one thing that I, I think is probably uh, the most telling is uh, the fact that the two of us probably communicate more at six o'clock in the morning on the way to work than any two other people do. As a result of that, um, I'm, I'm honored to have a partner working alongside of me in the work that we're doing for the Hoboken School District, and I'm confident that both of us together as a team can help continue to support our phenomenal staff um, and to support and continue to help uh, each and every one of our students in the district grow and progress. So at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Gerald Fitzhugh as the next Assistant Superintendent. Good evening, Board of Education members, Dr. Johnson, our esteemed superintendent of schools. This evening brings a plethora of excitement to our school district. Four years ago, I began as the principal of Connors Elementary, Elementary School, a school of excellence in a place where we build leadership each every single day. We're going to take that mantra and we're going to bring it to every single school in our district. I'm extremely excited of the work that's going to continue under our uh, tutelage. And again, I thank each of you for believing in my talent to be the partner to Dr. Um, Christine Johnson to continue the work here in the Hoboken Public School District. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Great. Um, so uh, next on tonight's agenda is public comment on agenda and non-agenda items. I have uh, one speaker listed, uh, Patricia Waiters. Okay. Patricia Waiters, thank you, um, board members. I really didn't have nothing to say. I was going to mention about the election, but thank God Dr. Johnson gave me four things to talk about that I added to the agenda. This is very important that I say this because when you just said Dean of Schools, my heart is like racing. So maybe I could get some rest this year and I don't have to keep running up to the high school. Miss P and Miss Gullo, I must say this. I tell Miss P all the time she need a raise and not to the sixth floor in her pocketbook. She, um, they, do, they did a phenomenal job. I'm so glad to see these two young men tonight and I hope they work hand in hand to keep up the good work that Miss P and Miss Gullo have been displaying in our kids. Our kids could be a handful and that's including mine. And the way, and the way they handled it was amazing. Miss P, you my witness, I tell you all the time, my heart go out to her. I think she can handle the Jersey City schools, to be frank with you. And if you can handle that, you like Superman. And it's good to see this on the agenda. And it's just another reason to tell you how I like to stand here and brag about my new 
director slash superintendent, superhero, doing a phenomenal job. Everything you have touched in this city so far has shined a big light and it's really helping our kids. And it will give them the positive reinforcement that I always tell them all the time because they're going to show that we have a superintendent with compassion. So you seen we need was an urge of a need of a dean because we did have disciplinary and behavior issues that was ridiculous. We shouldn't have to have cop cars parked in front of our school. It doesn't look good. So I know they're doing a good job. I know they will continue to do a good job. And as long as you continue, Ms. Uh, Super, uh, Dr. Johnson, you have me here. Anything you need, like I told you before, I'm in your corner. That's, the, that's a great mood you made. And Patch Mr. Fitzhugh, excellent. I cannot tell you the things, because I'm not wasting my whole five minutes about him, but it's excellent. He go to your house if he have to and bring you to school. I have never. It remind me of the movie Lean On Me. He make the kids that don't want to learn be willing to learn, because it's no such thing as no, okay? He remind me of me. He put the O in the front, carry on. You don't have a choice. You going to school and you getting your education. So if he did such a phenomenal job in Connors, I know we getting ready to see a big shiny light on this district. You made an excellent decision with that. All right, the transfers too. I had issues with that with the last two superintendents, and you're absolutely right. It is for the betterment of the school district and the children in it. Sometimes you have to put a teacher or staff member somewhere where they're needed most, and it'll help benefit the whole district for the betterment of the district. So sometimes personal issues, and I know you grow a bond with certain kids, swing by their school and say hello if you have to, but still, it's for the betterment, and it looks more professional to put somebody where they're needed because it helped the district run smooth with that being said on that one. The ribbon cutting, I will be there. Miss Pick, um, I have a few um, mothers that did not, wasn't able to um, confirm about the dinner orientation. Excellent idea. People can't say they forgot because it's actually the day before school and you serving dinner. So I know people watching this in TV land. I told them I was going to say it. I reserved a lot of people. I better see a packed house. A packed house because we interested in knowing what our kids what our kids what we have to look forward to with our kids and I'm quite sure the district is gonna get much better than it was last year and with that being said let me wrap it up with saying this no I did not disappoint Hoboken and my 2721 supporters I will not be running for the Board of Ed so with this being said, the phone calls, even the Jersey Journal, the superintendent of elections, yes, I'm, I'm clarifying it, yes, I will not be running. I decided to sit back and I could still utilize all of my energy and volunteer my time. I'm gonna do exactly what I've been doing. I tell y'all that every year, win or lose, cause starting next week or next the next meeting, you're gonna see this place jam packed. And it just bothered me cause it gave me a sense of disingenuine. You know what I'm saying? I ran seven years, but you still see me here seven years later, every day, every meeting. I just want the people that's watching this to please Please beware. Do your homework. Get somebody that's going to get on this board and really take care of our district, our staff, the children. And I might be coming out to make an endorsement. I don't know yet. But please do your homework. I will be knocking on doors. I will get behind somebody and support them because I want what's right for this district. So I feel that I didn't let nobody down. Don't give up. I'm definitely running next year. God's willing. And again, I'm just going to sit back this time and volunteer. If anybody need me, I'm available. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, um, any board members have anything to add at this point? Sure. I just wanted to congratulate uh, Mr. Dickinson, uh, Mr. Pacini, Dr. Pollins, and Mr. Fitzhugh. Congratulations, welcome, and look forward to a great school year. Ditto what uh, Ms. Angley said. Congratulations to everybody. Mr. Fitzhugh, you're going to be working a lot more with us now since you are in the administration, so I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I guess you'll find out soon enough. <laughs> um, but certainly, congratulations to everybody. I'm very excited. Uh, and also, don't forget, ribbon cutting, September 9th. I've been talking about the field replacement for a year, and uh, we're hopefully uh, we have a packed house for our first football game and for the ribbon cutting. So, thank you. I just want to say I'm looking forward to another really exciting year with all the staff on board uh, and the families and the students. So congratulations and it's going to be a great year. Okay. 
Well, congratulations. Judging by the number of stipends some of you have, I don't know how you're going to get any sleep, but I'm sure you're going to do a great job and welcome. Well, I would like to congratulate all the new hires. Um, you all are very dedicated professionals and your, your speeches and your presence exude that. Um, I do have something else to say. <clears throat> My fellow elected trustees, administration, staff, parents, students, and community members of Hoboken, it is with a heavy heart tonight that I submit my resignation as a trustee of the Hobo Hoboken Public School. My family and I will be moving out of the state and I can no longer serve this great city of Hoboken. After serving for three years on all committees, including as the designee of the superintendent for the Hoboken Public Library, HECAC, and chairing the Curriculum and Negotiations Committee, I have been a part of a wonderful transformation of the school district and city. I am sad to leave not only as a trustee, but as a parent of two children within the district. The programs that have evolved over the time and the new initiatives are far superior and will change many lives of our Hoboken Public School children. When I decided to run for the school board, I knew I wanted to continue the progress that was made and improve upon it. I came with a fresh set of eyes from the Midwest, no political aspirations or affiliations, and just a desire to ensure all students receive the very best education possible. I was taught from a young age to give back to the community you live in and to leave things in a better condition than you went when, when you found them. I believe I have done so while living in Hoboken. My actions on the school board have always been what's in the best interest for the students, staff, and community as a whole. Some of my decisions were truly agonizing ones, but each decision was always thought out and free from bias and solely based on educational advancement. So as I leave my position, I have words of advice to my colleagues. Do what you love and love what you do. Without a start, there will never be a finish. Remind yourself why are you here. It's for the children of Hoboken Public Schools. And as Isabel Bach states, I choose to live by choice, not by chance, to make changes, not excuses to be motivated, not manipulated to be useful, not used to excel, not used to excel, not compete. I choose self-esteem, not self-pity. I choose to listen to my inner voice, not the random opinions of others. I hope the work I have dedicated myself here continues to improve each year and the students and community are proud of the progress that is made. And to my future successor, whoever you are, I hope that you give 100% of your, and your decisions are based on providing educational opportunities for our students. And know that sometimes the best decision is often the hardest to make and people may criticize your choices with knowing very little information. As Nelson Mandela said, there can be no keener revelation of a society's soul than the way in which it treats its children. I wanted to thank my fellow trustees for working together and finding common ground to move the district forward. Thank you to the superintendent, administration, and the staff. It has been a pleasure working with you. Dr. Johnson, you're an amazing educational leader and I look forward to hearing about all the advancements that you continue to implement. To the unions that I have worked with these past few years, thank you. Your support and dedication to our students is unwavering. The past negotiations have been truly amazing as we came together as partners instead of opponents. Together we have truly made a difference. And thank you to the parents, children, and voters who supported and believed me. Without you, I would not have had this amazing opportunity. And most important, thank you to my family and friends, especially my amazing husband and children. You were the reasons why I did this. You believed in me and encouraged me to follow my passion. You often gave up things to accommodate my many meetings, performances, and countless activities that I participated while serving in the district. One of my favorite poets, T.S. Eliot, said, what we call the beginning is often the end, and to make an end is to make, an end, to be, make a beginning. The end is where we start from. Thank you, and all the best of luck to everyone. Did any, I was going to open up the floor if any members of the public wanted to make a comment on this specific item. Do that first, and then if any board members want to make a comment. Okay. All right. Mr. Enrico? 
Yeah, I'm really, I'm really sad, to tell you the truth. I've been coming to these board meetings for over 30 years, and I've been shocked, but this was, I didn't see this one coming. It was really, it was really a pleasure working with you, Monica. And I know you always had the children and, you know, the kids' interests at heart, and the last negotiations, I remember us standing on 11th Street talking, and you were saying, no, we're going to get this done, we're going to get this done, just hang in there. And, you know, we really appreciate it. I know Roseanne and the team, you know, they're going to be shocked, and I hope you have, wherever you're moving up, I'm sure you're going to be involved there, and you're going to be great where you are. So I'm, I'm going to miss you personally. I, it was great. So I wish you luck. One other thing. Do you have to be over six feet to get to Dean's job? Because <laughs> I was going to reply, but I, I didn't want to do it. But again, good luck, Monica. Okay. Okay. Um, whoop, okay. Okay. Hi, how are you? Um, my name is Monica Cross, 510 Monroe Street. Um, up until very recently, um, I, me and my husband Jacob uh, were parents of a little boy who was on the Hoboken Preschool um, wait list. And um, we were one of the lucky ones to come off, but we are here on behalf of the 39 parents, who um, some of who couldn't make it tonight and some of who are our friends as well. And um, I'm sure everything that I'm thinking, feeling, is something that the board has heard before, but one of the things that we wanted to bring up um, today was just uh, something that was new information to us after we became a waitlisted parent, which was how ill-equipped um, the city of Hoboken is from the private sector to accept children who specifically might be on the waitlist or who haven't um, been placed into preschool, and then to potentially put them somewhere until maybe the spot opens up at a later date, any time between now, October, and uh, January. And um, it was just an issue that we wanted to bring up and hope that, um, you know, we had actually met with Dr. Johnson. Hi, hope you're doing well. And it was a fantastic meeting we, where we also talked about um, potentially opening up a private a classroom that could help, you know, funnel these kids into a location that when the public public seat opened up that they could then eventually get into. Um, we don't know what the status of that idea is. We did reach out to a bunch of folks, but we do hope that in the coming months and in the year that other parents like us who maybe did get placed into the program don't forget what it was like to be on the wait list so that next year and the years after we can do something to, to alleviate the stress for those parents who then found themselves displaced and unsure of where to go. Is there anything else you want to add? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll add a little to that, which is um, again, thank you to Dr. Johnson for meeting with us. That helped a lot understanding the process. I, I think this is an issue that's very easy for people to forget about because once your kid does get accepted, that's kind of it. Uh, you tend not to kind of think about it. So we're, we're here today. Our, our son did get accepted. We're very happy about that. But there are still people on the wait list. And more importantly, if, if future population increases or any indication, this problem should only get worse over the next few years. And I think it's critical to, to Hoboken, to the kids that live here, that, that there try to be avenues taken to address this. I know for us personally, it was very difficult from a standpoint of not knowing whether we were gonna get in or not. And through that process of thinking how, thinking through that problem of how it might have been addressed, what we realized is that it's really critical that this be taken from a public standpoint because the private sector can't come in and fill this. Typically you would think, that this could be something where, you know, okay, well, if you don't go here, you can go to a private type situation, but a private schools can't operate if they're gonna be losing students back into the public school system as seats become available for them. So I think it's very difficult for them to fill this role. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I know how stressful waiting can be. And thanks to Dr. Johnson and the administration, we actually have more than our allocated seats. I think sometimes the citizens of Hoboken ought to realize the reason there is a pre-K school is because we're an Abbott district. And the purpose of an Abbott district is to help uh, disadvantaged children. And all children are treated the same in a neighborhood, which is really a good civics lesson. You know, we get the benefits from living with other people, with people in a diverse community, and to the extent that you think there are downsides, well, that's, the, um, that's part of the bargain. 
So I think a lot of people should realize that uh, the pre-K school is not universal. Uh, perhaps if you're my political viewpoint, you think it should be, and we wouldn't have this conversation, but it's really pretty specific to Hoboken. Having said that, though, the administration's done everything they can to provide space, and in a way you have to be active like your group is. For example, you need other parents to tell you when they to move. Um, they move, move for a variety of reasons. I was shocked, and it takes a lot to shock me, that some parents were using Airbnb addresses to try to get their kids in our pre-K school. That, um, due to the diligence of the administration, they found out and have eliminated that. So perhaps nothing is more stressful, perhaps, um, you know, writing to your Congress and stuff, we can get even more of the allocation that we have. But, um, I mean, I wish you luck, but it's real. It's really difficult, but I think it's so easy for the community to lose track of why, in fact, we do have this pre-K. And since I'm going to go out and allege a little, if you take our pre-K, you have a bit of an obligation to the public school system. And if you don't feel that way, well, you've got to live with yourself. So um, that's my two cents. And I wish you all the luck. Okay. Um. Oh, my gosh. Um, just on, I, I, this isn't a discussion. I, I really had only just intended this to be. This is very important, only on preschool. And this is, you sat on the board with me, okay. no disrespect, but Dr. Johnson, on, on the preschool level, I feel bad that a lot of parents are coming to you. I sat on the board with you, and you know the problem we had with the preschool. Thank you, Dr. Gold, for explaining that. If you go to the housing authority, so many kids is home. And they want a waiting list. They have no income, they have no other choice. We can't afford all of these new uh, academies you see on every corner. So it's not fair to them either. The Abbott District was there to accommodate them too. Thank you, Dr. Gold. And I sit on the board and you know that. I used to always say that. We're running out of space, it's not fair. We already crammed up in the high school to make room for the three and four year old program. I'm not anti three and four year old. My kids was three and four, but they stayed in the school district. So you should change the legislation. If you start out at three and four, start keeping those kids in our district too. Because by the time first grade, we lose them. Thank you. And think about the housing authority kids. I got a list, I'm getting calls like you, Dr. Johnson, and I have no answers. It's overcrowded and I do feel bad for them. They home, thank you. Okay, so um, did, I, I had intended for this to be about Ms. Stromwall, but is that, okay, all right. <laughs> okay, okay, and then, we'll, then we're gonna close public comment and I'll give everyone a chance if they wanted to speak about Ms. Stromwall. Okay. I was, a, I was a board member for about four years and I had the pleasure of working with uh, Monica and she was articulate, above all, passionate. She has skin in the game and I just want to just offer you the, just the biggest thanks I just, for helping the city and helping the, the children of the Hoboken Public Schools. Thank you for all your work. Sharon? Monica, okay. thank you so much for your hard work and dedication. Um, our children in this district have benefited from all of that and you will certainly be missed, so thank you. Well, I'm in shock. <laughs> so, Monica, you and I, we actually ran against each other a few years ago and I remember you emailing me and you texting me and you calling because you were put in as an interim board member before you were elected. And I said, wow, I'm just loving all this open communication for somebody who is not on the same side as like Hoboken likes to say, uh, as me. And I have to tell you, over the last two years since we, uh, uh, were, I was re-elected and you were elected, we worked on three contracts together in the last year. And I've been, I was so impressed. I mean, you were the chair of the negotiations committee for each of those contracts of how open and honest and how articulate uh, as a member of the public said. And I really enjoyed working with you. I really, really did. And I'm certainly going to miss you. So thank you for your time and effort. I want to thank you, Monica, for being a welcoming team member and always really willing to take time to explain things to me. I know there were late night phone calls of all the work that you were doing uh, behind the scenes. So I really appreciate that and your grace and kindness will be dearly missed. I'm going to miss you, Monica. Okay. Um, yeah, I, 
a few years ago, I happened to be at an event uh, that, for my daughter that Monica was at, and I said, hey, there's this opening on the board. And Monica was like, yeah, I'd be interested. Um, and, you know, I just personifies, you know, Monica's really can-do, up-for-it attitude, and, you know, I didn't know her too well, um, but I was really impressed, you know, from day one with her commitment, her energy, uh, you know, she's really straightforward, um, and, you know, really good at building relationships, and I really think that um, while, you know, you'll see her impact on so many areas, I do think that um, the negotiations and um, building those relationships and getting those contracts done, you know, as part of a group uh, and working with the union that touches so many areas um, will be her legacy and you'll be missed. And thank you. Okay. Um, anyone? Okay, we're all Mission good. Close. Okay, so, well, I did want to just say um, our next meeting is on September 13th. And um, that is all I had. So if I have a, do have a motion to adjourn? Motion, Second. Okay. All right. Aye. 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 Aye.